Well, good morning. It is um, nine so something or other. And we're late. It's Monday. Uh, well, I'm not late. I was here. I am late. I had to be here. Though. I'll own it. I had to be here though because I'm the one who's doing all the all the tech stuff, and we are simulcasting this morning on uh, our speaker channel, uh, soon to be uploaded to iHeart.com. So you can listen. So if you have time to watch on YouTube, hey Philip. Um, you can listen on iHeart.com or Spreaker or Spotify. It's going to be on Spotify too. So it's everywhere. We we're everywhere this morning. Uh, anyway, we appreciate you being here um, again. We've met, did, did we miss last week? Yes, because I worked a different schedule. Oh, okay. It, 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 it just seems like the weeks just fly by at light speed. And I don't know what's up most of the time. Uh, yeah, because last Monday this time I was working. Mm. And so, we did not have the show. We didn't. Um, but we're here this morning, and um, I think we have a good. I, I, I think we have a good topic. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. I think it'll be something that a lot of a, a, a lot of people who who aren't married yet are going to be able to participate in. And I think, to some degree, a lot of people who are already married can participate in these things too. Sort of as a refresher, sort of as a, a little brush up. Hey, Catherine, how are you doing? Um, so I think that, that, that this will be good now. There's a whole bunch of, uh, of things that you that you may you may want to ask before you get married, and we're not going to go through all of them. Because we'd be here for six hours, and we're just not going to be one of those YouTubers that do six-hour videos. Well, for one thing, we have to really work for a living. We have to go outside <laughs> and do stuff out there. <laughs> so we won't be doing any of that. And I'm sure you're thankful, and I'm grateful that you're thankful. So, um, I and, and this and and it's, this is sort of how the synergy works. Sometimes I was at my second job, and there is a um, a person there who watches our videos, and I asked her in a, in, in a break. We had a break at the, at the same time, and I asked her, you know, what one of, what's one of the things that you want us to talk about? Because we ask God all the time. Is there something that you want us to address? Something that you want us to talk about? And her and, her, and I said and I asked her that, and she said, "How?" <laughs> said, "That's that's tough." That's a tough question because it isn't a single hey ever. It isn't a single answer thing. It's like oh, do this. It, 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 and your marriage tidy, will work. Yeah, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and then. You're, it'll work. It's not that, and boof, it's thirty years. Thirty years later, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's not like it's not like that. Um, there are a lot of moving pieces, and um, but at, at the same tab, time, Deb was looking up for us, something to talk about, and found on I think a really good site that you could go to. Um, it's called Marriage365.org. Um, it's a lot. Hey, Rick and Mark, there are a lot of resources there um, that you can have access to. You know, in conjunction with the Real, Real Talk with Devin Will videos on YouTube and Facebook and the show on Spotify. Uh, so there's lots of resources that you can go to. Um, so we're going to cover a couple of these questions, and hopefully I'll be able to at, a, answer um, our viewers' questions about how. Because it's, 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 it's complicated. It's, yeah. It can be complicated. A lot of moving parts. Just like life. Life? Life is well, complicated. Life is complicated. Just like hot water. <laughs> it's not hot water. It's room temperature bottled water. Truly first world problems. Truly like first world problems. I want cold water. Now, if you're in the if you're in Gambia and you had any water in, in like a day and, and a half, thirsty. you'd be like, whatever. I'll drink it. So you got that in the toilet? Sure. Get me a cup. Never mind. I got my hand. <laughs> And during, sure. and during hurricanes, if you run out of water, don't drink the water from the bowl in the toilet. Drink the water out of the tank. It's fine. It's going to be a, a little, it's going to take us a little bit like um, ceramic. Metal. A little ceramic-y and a little metal -y, but it's fine. Uh, don't drink out of the tank, though, because that's where your poop is. Drink out of the tank. Don't drink out of the bowl. Don't drink out of the bowl where you put your butt. Don't drink there. Drink out of the tank, and you'll be okay. All right, listen, um, I have the questions up. Which one of the questions that you did you want to um, to, to address? See how prepared I am? Yes, you're very prepared. Yay. After I went to bed last night, I pooped out on him. I pooped out. 
but I was tired. You know what? And and you guys saw the um the pictures on Instagram of all all the meal prep. So what? I I actually just want to do the first one. How did your parents show their love to you growing up? And and that's weird because it it I guess that kind of reflects through you. However, your parents loved you and stuff. You you reciprocate that love to your spouse. Well, I don't know. How did your parents show show their love to you? Mm -hmm. um, and and I and, and I think that question is more like how did they how did they show how they loved each other to you? Now we are creatures of habit, and we will model behavior. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we will behave if if, we, if even if we don't mean to subconsciously. Like our parents, because that's the example that we have, obviously. When all of a sudden you're talking to your children and you hear... Your mother come out of your mouth? Your mother come out of your mouth. <laughs> you're like, oh, it's freaky. It, it happened. <laughs> it happened. It happened. But for the most part, you know what, unless there are extreme circumstances, um, it's going to. And sometimes there are extreme circumstances where there's abuse and, and drug use and alcoholism and... It and, and also comes the, out of you Also sort of extreme stuff that happens... You may be able you may be able to to find out early enough to fight some of that off, but in most circumstances, you're going to behave like your parents. So it's important to know, you know, look at your spouse if you can. I mean, if if they're still here and they're still accessible, um, how did your parents show their affection to you and to one another? Mm -hmm. What's their affection shown in your your home uh, growing up? Um, mine was kind of, it occasionally because we grew up in an era where people, you know, they, they didn't talk about sex and they didn't talk about, you know, affection and show it because my father would always say, well, I, I show you, I love you because I take care of you. Well, and that was, and, and, that was their generation. And that was their generation. But I think there, I think there are other things that, that, that even people like your dad don't. You know what, maybe, hey, Allie, how are you doing? How are you feeling, hon? Um, but um, I think that a lot of people, um, even in that generation, they grew up, uh, I think they did show affection in ways, not just going to work and, you know, and, and bringing home the bacon. I think it's the way that they addressed one another. I think it's the way that they, um, they looked out for one another, not just in, not just in a financial sense or, 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 or so, but they, you know, they they knew what their spouses liked, you know, they didn't like, um, that kind of stuff, you know. They they were kind to each other, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, once they got mature enough, they were they were kind to each other, and, and and you could see that, and they respected each other, and that kind of stuff. So I think that that's hey Jess, um, hope I didn't play too many wrong notes last night. Tried my best, promise. Um, so it was so that's the kind of thing that. I think that you can learn that you can learn from your yeah. soon-to-be spouse, um, and and learn for yourself too. Did did you notice these things as your parents um, that you saw your parents doing that you continue to see your parents doing even now? If you're young enough and your parents are still again still alive and and they're and, and they're still involved in their relationship, their relationship is still growing. I think that that's important. How do they show affection or they show their love? Um, so what did you what did you learn what did you learn from from watching them? I learned from my mother. You know, my mother showed her love, of course, through her cooking and cleaning and 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 how she managed her household. It was the same way. It was that she showed her love because of what she did. Mm -hmm. But she was also affectionate. She would hug and kiss, and you know, she did. She. I, I mean, I was in my 20s, and I could still get up in my mom's lap, and she would hold me and affectionately love me. And um, even up into my 30s, when I went home, I could get, I could lay my head in her lap. I could, you know, all of those affectionate things, and she didn't mind. And, you know, my father, he hugged him and showed love also, but it was more on the lines of, special occasions and you know your birthday and different things like that but that was the era that they yeah. grew up in I, again say that who was since he was he was he, I, I think your dad was sentimental yes 
He remembered things. I think those things, I, I, I think milestones meant a lot to him, birthdays, mm -hmm. births of children, that kind of stuff. I think, I think, I think, I think your dad was very sentimental. Weddings. Was a sentimental person. At my, I mean, at my, my our wedding, he was so proud. I mean. He was very happy. I remember yes. That. The, that was the first time he got to wear a tuxedo and he was just beaming. I mean, it was, it was very emotional. It was cool. He was, cause, cause he was, he was, he, he, he was a sentimental guy. Mm -hmm. And um, so, like I said before, so it's a lot of times it's more than. And what they grew, I mean, what they grew up with. I mean, you have to look a little bit beyond that sometimes to find out uh, what kind of people, you know, what kind of people they really are. So I think that's important. If you can get some idea of how your how your spouse's parents show show affection, you will have some idea of how your spouse is going to show affection because of what they've seen in their lives, what they've experienced in their lives, and what their parents have modeled for them. And a lot of times with young ladies with guys. You can know how your your uh, husband is going to treat you by the way that their relationship is with their mom, mm -hmm. because if they don't respect their mother, ninety nine percent of the time they're not going to respect you. Yeah, they're jerks. So, I mean, if you I mean if you can't be nice to your mama, then you're a jerk. So avoid those people. But and I know that's an absolute, but I don't care. I don't care. Now you can yeah. take that advice and do whatever you want with it. But if they're nice. They're not nice to their moms. Then they're they're nice to anybody. You can't be nice to your mama. You can't be nice to anybody. And I understand there are, are extreme circumstances. I get all that. But generally speaking, if you can't be nice to your mama, then you can't be nice to anybody. All right, so is there another one here? There's um, a bunch of them. There's like 80, yeah. 85 on this This is enough for us to cover for the rest of the year. Like six, a six-hour show. <laughs> but we've got jobs. <laughs> so we need more subscribers so we can stay here for six hours. Why don't you pick one? I picked the last. Oh, okay. Um, how do you handle your anger? How do you hand, handle your anger? Now, I'm not sure, you know, what in what sort of Starbucks conversation while you're having ice cream, you know, while you're all snuggly and all, you know, how y'all how y'all do when y'all be dating and stuff. How you just go? Well, how do you handle anger? I don't know. I don't know how that know how that question comes up, but it's a true. But it's an important question because again, while you're dating, you know, we have a tendency to always put on our best face, and we are the most patient, mm -hmm. and we are the most understanding, and we try not to have anything negative come out in our in our tone of voice. We talk like this all the time. Oh, it's all that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. And then we go home to our apartment and kick the crap out of the dog, right? Um, so, how how do people handle anger? Because anger is one because you know anger is one of those things. Again, like a lot of things, like finances and um, uh, you know and, and infidelity and those kind of things that have a really can have a deleterious effect on marriages. How people simply handle anger, and then what your spouse is used to. Your spouse may be used to, you know, what in modeling her fam her family or his family's life and handle anger where people yell and they scream and they, they break things yes. and and then if but you see that but, in, if, you're growing but up. in fifteen minutes it's all over and they never think about and it and they go right back they, the same way and they never talk it. about it again. It seems like what the heck? Some people handle it that way and then some people just swallow it and that's freaky to people who aren't used to seeing that either. I'm a swallow. They just swallow it. Go certain point, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then eventually it comes out, yeah. and that's not a good way to handle it either. I've decided that there's there's only going to be some stuff I'm going to be angry about. I've I don't know how evolved I am, but you know I saw a lot of and if you watch some of our other videos, I saw a lot of violence in my house. Um, so I'm I'm the person who's who's kind of swallows the anger, but I've made decisions about what I'm be angry, what I'm really going to be angry about. Uh, I think that it's important to find out, you know what, is this going to be, is this really that important? Something I say all the time, and I'll, I will continue to say, is it worth the relationship? You have, to, you have to balance that offense or that thing that doesn't work, that isn't going well. Is it more important than the relationship? Um, and, and, and what you'll find out is that you can slow down, slow down for a second and think about it for a second. Most of the time it is not. 
most of the time it isn't anything that is that is worth the relationship. You know, it's you find out that it's small for the most part. In the in the big realm of things, you know, in, in the big scope small. of thing, it's small. It just bothered you then. You know, it's like a mosquito bite. I haven't enjoyed one mosquito bite I've ever had. I never gone. Oh, that was that was the best damn mosquito bite I ever had. That wasn't bad. I hated every single one of them. <laughs> every single one. Every mosquito bite, every ant bite, you hate every single one. But you know what? After a while, they go away. You're like, okay, and you find out that, that you're going to live through it. Even when they bite you, I thought mosquitoes bite me right in the middle of my forehead. I feel how bold is that? That a mosquito come and bite you right in the face. But, you know, I've survived every single one of them. And eventually, even if you don't do anything about it, it goes away because it wasn't that important. It's not that important. It just wasn't that important. Um, unless there's some kind of disease going on. Well, yeah, I can't be getting <laughs> cephalitis in your head. Oh, I've got to go live on my forehead. Uh, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> every single ant bite has been awful. Every single mosquito bite has been terrible. Um but do you let that rise to the next level? Do you let it rise to the next level? Or do you just, or can you just decide it's really not worth it's it? It's not worth it. It's not worth After it. After 30 years, you know, you pick your fights wisely. And you pick your anger, you know, things you want to get angry about. There are some things now that, that may happen within our marriage, and I'll go, okay. And when the first three years we were married, I would be like, are you kidding me? I'm not going to put up with this. I'm going to blah, blah. It was Nick popping time. Did I ever get angry? But Very rarely. Very rarely. I get angry. And I, and I think it's because my upbringing. I saw, I saw what anger was and I saw what it did. Mm -hmm. And I saw what a bad thing. I'm sorry. I'm almost going to knock over my guitar. Um, but I, I, so I saw that and I really didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be angry. Um, now it caused some, you know, it caused some in internal stress and frustration sometimes, and maybe it led to high blood pressure or whatever. But, well, no, I think that my he heart surgery. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't think it led to. I don't think I was so angry that it led to open heart surgery. You joke. We joke about it, but that you know, holding back stuff and putting it internally can, can become uh, can. But I, uh, health issue. I think my problem was pork chops. <laughs> And you know why? Because they're delicious. And um, <laughs> pork chops and applesauce. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's... Bacon. Think, bacon. Yeah, so so I, I think it's, that it's really important that, for me anyway, that you decide how people are going to be angry. And again, and, and at least know. So when something comes up and, you know what, you stay married long enough, like old folks say, you, you keep living. Keep living. You keep living. You'll see. Um... How someone's going to handle being angry, because you, it's going to you're going to get angry. You, you're not going to be Superman or Superwoman. You're not going to be Mother Teresa. You're going to get angry about something. Now you you have to find out how you're going to handle that and how you used to and, you, and how your parents handle it, how your family handle it may not be how you want to handle it in your relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to make a conscious choice at that point. So that's that's something that you can talk about. Again, I don't know how you bring that up. While you're all smooshed over eating ice cream. Hey, can I ask you a question? What do you do when you get all pissed off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't have any idea how you do that. But I'm about to get pissed off right now. <laughs> well, what I don't like is people licking ice cream like this. <laughs> Smacking it in my ear. I hate that. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know how you bring that up, but if you can weave that into a conversation at some point, it would probably be a, a good idea. All right. Um, Can we scroll? No, I, I, I see the one I want to do. Do you have trust issues and insecurities? That's a good one. Because if you have trust issues and insecurities that are left over from a previous relationship or your family relationship, it can affect your marriage. Well, it will. It, yes. it will. It will. You know what? If I, if I could flip back for a second when we started um, today we talked about um, somebody that, <clears throat> that I work with who watched our program um, asked me that question hey Mark 
Um, how y'all doing? But um, and one of the things I told her was like, listen, part of of of, of staying married for thirty plus years, or in today's world, thirty plus days, um, is that you've got to be the right person. You've got to be the right. Per- it, it, it's more. It's almost more than finding the right person. Mm-hmm. It's you, you have, have to, to be, be the, right the right person, and um, and the right person isn't someone who does who doesn't trust, because you think that once you get in, you know when you're in a relationship you spend a lot a lot of time together and you do you eat ice cream and you're you know what and you're coffee. you're drinking coffee and you're frolicking. Um, but you know when you get into the real world of of, of how to be grown ups, uh, there is, there may be two thirds of the day where you won't see each other because you're at work or whatever. Um, when you have to trust that person to be without you, you know if you have a spouse that travels, especially if you have, have spouses that travel that travels on a regular basis with, you know, co-workers and different things like that, you got to be able to trust that they're going to make the right decisions. You know, I have a co-worker that sits next to me and she was talking about something, uh, a person coming to stay with them. And she said, I trust my husband enough to not worry about him wanting to do anything wrong. And I thought that was such a wonderful statement because that's the same way I feel. You know, we we may be in situations where, you know, someone has to live with us that's 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 a female or, you know, a male, whatever, and we trust each other enough to know they're that person that that's not a threat. Oh yeah, you know what and you and, 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 and that trust you have to first of all you have to build and you've gotta be a person who, who who will not make and and we heard this a long time ago? Who will not make the people of their present pay for the sins of the people of their past? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you got you know if you got cheated on, or you know what, or if you saw again, if you modeled if you're modeling your parent your parents model behavior, and you saw people being untrustworthy, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person that you're I mean that you're with now is going it's to going exhibit to the way. same behavior. So. Um, if there are trust issues, normally the person who has them needs to investigate themselves first, because I, can, no matter what I do, I can't make you trust me. I can live my life in a trustworthy fashion, but I can't make you trust me if the issues are your past, because I can't compete with your ghosts. Because they did what they did, you know they they don't know what you've lived through. Or what you've seen, or what somebody else and even did if I, to you. And even if I do, there's nothing I can, first of all, there's nothing, I can, there's nothing you can do about it, nothing I can do about it either. Mm-hmm. I can just live my life as in a, in a, in a, in a trustworthy fashion. It's you that has to trust me. Mm-hmm. And that's all, and, 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 and trust issues are the, per, the issue of the person that has them. Not necessarily the, um, the I mean, the, the issue of the person who isn't being trusted, and especially if you've not done anything. If, if That's the hard part. If you, I mean, if the person has cheated on you or done something and you're in the relationship if, now, it's kind of, you can kind of understand why they wouldn't trust you. But if they haven't done anything at all and you're just going by, well, all men are dogs. All men are dogs. If you're going by that, uh, then you, you, you shouldn't, you got to deal with that. You got to check yourself well yeah and I think that that's one of the things that I think people have to do some introspection on and being the right person are you a person that trusts people because you're going because you're going to have to you're just going to have to and I and for a lot of people I know that's tough hey hey, Rob um, I know that's tough but you're going to have to trust the other person you're not going to be able to be in their back pocket to be in the backseat of their car um, to be in their wallet um, the whole time to be in their purse the whole time you're going to have to trust them that's all there is to it and that's you know and I guess that can be tough because there are people who aren't trustworthy for sure mm-hmm. and I know that's that some women or actually men too say you know what I, I've been in a number of relationships and they are, and every every time I pick somebody they cheat on me I have to wonder is it them or is it them or is it you, you? 
It, There's a reason that's happening to you. If somebody has been married five times, it ain't all the other people's fault. I'm just saying that. They didn't just find five, they just didn't find four bad people. Maybe that person who got married five, who got divorced five times, maybe it was something in them that was they were they were somewhat responsible for all of that too. Um, so a lot of introspection. And that's it. And I don't, I, I don't know how you bring up that question either, but uh, hi, do you have trust issues? <laughs> Are you? Well, a lot of times, depending on how long you date someone, that's why it's important to develop a relationship before you make a commitment. Um, you can tell, you know, you can see that that person may have some issues where, you know, they're always asking you, well, where were you? Who were you with? Why you didn't call me? I don't know. I text you. I you know. didn't answer. I know. What were you doing? I was sleeping with this chick. Oh, I mean, I mean I'm sorry. <laughs> I was pooping. <laughs> I poop a lot. You shouldn't use your shouldn't use your phone when you're in the bathroom because it puts poop on your phone. You shouldn't do that. That's nasty. Well, it is. Yeah. And I see people do it every All the day. Time. Don't do that. Don't take your no. phone in the stall if, with and you. And if you know if you're going to sit down and do number two, please don't use your phone while you're doing that. That's nasty. That's nasty, baby. That's nasty. <laughs> That's a new thing. Anyway. Um, all right. Let's do one more. Oh, oh, it's, it's your turn. Oh, it's my turn. Like tennis. I said the ball go. Oh, oh the ball. Oh, oh it's back there. Uh, I'll go get it. We'll do that at night. Do you want kids? See, I think that you can do. See, I think that's one of the one of those ice cream parlor questions you can actually ask. So, how many kids do you want? Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can go, nope, and then run. <laughs> how do you want kids? If so, how many? And how do you intend to shape our children's values? And that's a that's, that's way too many. That's too that's hard. A lot. That's a whole show to unpack. Um, but children. Uh, are a an, an important thing if you're going to have a, a, a family and stuff, and it's a, it's an important thing. So yes, talk about it beforehand. Don't don't let it just happen by accident. <laughs> Oops, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Oops, I'm pregnant again. Well, a lot of times it happens Oops, before they again. even get married. Oops, so pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're even if you're in a dating relationship, it's very important that you talk about. You know, birth control and what well, what are we what are we doing? And well, you know, but but how many but people let their how many kids do you want? Mm -hmm. And normally, again, because it's it's important. If I, I keep going back to the family situation that that people came out of, you know, if you came out of a, you know, a family situation where the, you have you have six brothers and sisters, and you are hooked up with an only child, <laughs> you can see. That there is going to be a difference of, of how, how someone's things. going to perceive mm -hmm. what that should be, right? So it's worth talking. It's worth talking about um, so, because people have expectations of things when they think about family. Some people think again. Some people think that a family is having a house full of kids. Mm -hmm. They do, and and, and there ain't nothing wrong with that if that's how it works out and that's what you want. Um, but other people think that having a family is having the 2.4 children, one one male, one female. Sorry for people who don't believe that, that that's true anymore, but it still is. Uh, you know, a station wagon would go on the side, and that's what they think of as a family. Or they think about having one child because that's how they grew up, and they seem okay. Um, so the idea is you, that's a conversation that you have to, that I think you have to have. You have to have. If you're get, going to be getting married, if you're married you need to talk married. about if you want to have kids or not. Because once you get into the, the marriage and then one starts saying, well, I want to have a baby. And the other one is like, well, hmm, maybe I won't have a baby I don't now. I don't have no kids. And then, and, then, and then you'll wonder, well, why didn't we talk about this beforehand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about <laughs> talk about it before? Talk about that beforehand. Because well, really I just important. assumed that you uh, wanted to have kids. And we've, we've all learned what assume means. Is that you make, I make an ass of you and me. So the idea is don't assume anything, especially about children, especially about your lives with other human beings that you are entirely responsible for. 
So make sure that you have that discussion. I think that's a very, very important discussion. Um, because some people, frankly, aren't, shouldn't have children. They're not parent material. They're just, you may be married material, but you may not be parent material. Mm -hmm. Because th that's a difference, I'm telling you, completely different skill set. Completely different skill set. Um, uh, even really nice people that, you know, know how to treat humans well and stuff, they, they just cannot parent. Parenting is tough. It's hard. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough it's thing. It's a whole and, other puppy. And it goes on for a long time. <laughs> it goes on for a long, Lifetime. long time. Because just because they're 18 don't mean it's over. No, it doesn't mean you take a breath and go, <sighs> I raised done. you. Nope. And does it mean, and, and does it have anything to do with, you know, if they still live with you or they don't, or, 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 or they live across the country or across the planet, you will always be their parent. Mm -hmm. And thus you will always have responsibilities in parenting. You may not have responsibilities anymore and, and make, make, sure they're, the, make sure they eat every day and, and they're clothed. You, those responsibilities may change, but you will always have the responsibility of being a parent. Always. Always. Yeah. That is if you plan on doing it right. Or you plan, plan on just abandoning your children in a forest somewhere and go, go for yourself. Good luck. <laughs> Don't eat those blueberries. Open those. Oh, you know, you will drop always, them off at the Starbucks. Drop them off at the Starbucks every day. You know, good luck. <laughs> go for yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, 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 that whole thing is crazy to me. But anyway, so that, those are the things, those are, those are at least, how many did we do? Did we do four? I don't even know how many. It, it, it seems That's like enough, good. though. That's enough for today, anyway. So, again, if you have any questions about in, in, in anything that you'd like us to talk about or babble about for a while, just put it in the comments below. <laughs> babble. Obviously. I, I, I don't know. Maybe. Take two. Call me in the morning. Um, go ahead and write them in the comments below. Um, we'd love to hear. I mean, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and, if you and if you're on, on, on Facebook and you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, do that. I will try my best to remember to put the link in the comments on Facebook. Go right to it and subscribe. Uh, we are at 74 now, something like that. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get to 100 before the end of the year. Why? Because we want to. Uh, it, is, it is one of the things we want to do. So if you will do that, that would, that would be great. And um, we'd love to, hear, we'd, again, love to hear from you. All right, so we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. For goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. And remember this, love you, love you and, and there's, there's nothing, nothing you can do about, about it. Bye-bye now.